Welcome to the Candor Intelligence Briefing. It is September 15th, 2024. Now, last weekend, I was in the south of France, so I didn't record an episode of Friends and Enemies with Jeff Nyquist, and this weekend he is at an event, so you might want to check that out. Uh, maybe I will remember to put a link down in the description. Now, a vacation in the south of France may sound romantic, yet if you actually want to see something, it's hard work. Old money was built on piracy and violence. We know that, and you can see the traces everywhere. They will even tell you that when you visit some of these palaces from the old nobility. When you stand on these hills overlooking the ocean, this is where the pirates actually made their money and then became legitimate sounding uh, governments. And also, you can still find traces of the older empires we're walking uh, right next to the ocean, uh, and then you see gr actually uh, Greek mosaics on the floor. So this was always changing who was who was running these things. So we know what built that power, and we know how these people are. However, regular people from the peasant class are also easily corrupted. You know that sort of vacation made me think a lot about. Uh, the topic of corruption, which is sort of like the topic of today's um, episode here. So you need to develop an understanding of what deeply matters to yourself and to other people, what truly satisfies you and others. So it's very important if you want to be successful in life, when you interact with other people, and if you want to decide what politician to support, or what m uh, media person to support. So for me, I enjoy my work, and I want space to work and for some other things. So I really value space. I I really, really deeply like space. I'm fascinated with it, right? So it's just, just to be able to move things and just do things, right? In a three-dimensional uh, room. This is fascinating to me. Uh, so other people, they don't care. They really don't care about space. Uh, same with cars and roads. I hated the roads in France. I prefer a large SUV and wide roads like in the US. I can rent a sports car if I want to drive one, otherwise it's not really doing much for me. Um, and yeah, you were walking by these stores in uh, in Monaco. So it's the clothing stores and the watch stores and other stores. So you're walking by these storefronts and there's this tiny little store with a glass windows and then you see a McLaren Senna, a 1.4 million euro sports car, pretty rare. Next to it are a bunch of Ferraris, and they have the price list hanging in the window. So it's just like any little dinky store. They just print out the price list on the computer, and then they stick it to the window uh, with some, some sticky tape. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you want the Senna, it's 1.4 million, and you want the Ferrari, it's 500,000 or 300,000. Yeah, it's nice and dandy, but you can't really enjoy these cars in Monaco, in, in south of France, or in France anyway, or in Italy. Um, most roads, you can't even drive these things. And if you try, if you know what roads you can drive them on, there will be rocks on the road, and uh, new potholes, and some other uh, problems, and you can never really drive them fast. Um, if you tried, it would be too dangerous for you or you would just run people over because and there's speed bumps everywhere these h hideous terrible speed bumps everywhere uh people crossing the street everywhere traffic is terrible everything is very narrow and tiny so driving is a freaking nightmare that's why even uh wealthy people they choose to drive in your basic um porsche suvs or um range rovers they just need to, to move from a to b fairly quickly so you can collect these nice cars, but it's really not doing much. You, you can just look at them, and that's uh, fairly it. And it's like it's like with a kid and a new toy, right? So you get your McLaren Senna, you drive it every once in a while. It's a collector's item. It may rise in value, and at some point you might want to sell it or not, and that's the end of it. Not really doing much for me. Um, I, I, re I really care about contact with people who are a good fit for me that really makes me happy and i i really like rolex watches for some reason and i don't much care about other brands i 
can't really explain why. Now, many brands, they can make same kind of watches and they can sell them for a lot less or they can sell them for a lot more. But I like these Rolexes and um, that's just something I wasn't really expecting when you see them in front of you, not on a video, not on a, uh, on a photo, when, you, when you're in front of them and they're just beautiful timepieces and I really, really like them. So that's just it. Um, I don't care. I, I don't care about expensive suits that uh, you see in Monaco, parts of the corporate world. And with other people, it's different. They deeply care about other things. And the truly, the truly powerful people use the regular people and always want to know what these regular individuals crave most. There, there is very, there's very little loyalty among people in the peasant class. That's how we have been conditioned over thousands of years of uh, you know, properly or halfway properly recorded history of the empires. So you have to be very careful with people. They may sell you out for very little prestige or items. So some people may sell you out for this or the other. A more powerful person may sell you out for a different reason. And you also find loyalty in different kinds of people. But you have to really, really find it. And um, and then comes the next thing. Ask yourself, how quickly would this politician, that influencer, whatever, sell me out? What would it take for this person to sell me out? Would this person sell me out? I mean, of course, you can put enough pressure on somebody and you can offer a, a person uh, so much stuff and you can almost, uh, you can almost recruit anybody. Um, but still... Um, you're not supposed to be a passive citizen. So you out there, you need to reward, you, you need to reward other people who are good, who are, who can exercise power with responsibility, who can acquire power with responsibility and make good choices. Sometimes you have to make tough choices sometimes. Uh, but this is, this is when you have to really um, make an effort to make uh, the right choice. So it's not like being a passive citizen and watching how other citizens are getting corrupted or put under pressure. We as citizens, we can reward other people too. And we can put pressure on other people too. You know, we can play that game too. So, um, that's, and as I said, so uh, very little loyalty among peasants. And that's why a lot of peasants, they will sell out very quickly because they think that they, they can never get loyalty from other regular people. Uh, they don't get rewarded. And uh, they even get a lot of pressure from regular people, unfair pressure, irrational pressure. So they rather sell out to a group that is established and has rules and seems more dependable, seems more dependable, right? Because if, if you walk around in Monaco, if, if you go to Antibes, Monaco, uh, Nice, uh, you know, you see the super rich and you, you see all the, the super properties, the mega properties and the super yachts and the mega yachts and it, the, right next to the regular folks. You know, I thought people in Monaco were all kind of rich, but they're not. There's hideous buildings everywhere, these tiny little apartments. They still have an ocean view and they still have a tiny little boat in the harbor and they're paying rent to have the boat in the harbor. Um, and these regular people, they try to stay in shape. So you almost see nobody down there at the coast, nobody who is overweight, almost nobody. Uh, so this is how you can sort of learn how to copy things from rich people, copy the right things, not, not necessarily the bad things. Um, but um, yeah, you, you watch these rich people, and you see their properties, but there are problems associated with that too. Now, one of the properties we saw was maybe the best one out there. So there's a hiking trail around it. It's a very famous uh, hiking trail, one of the most beautiful views you can ever see in the world. But um, you're walking around a super property or a mega property that costs tens of millions of dollars. And I think that one was once owned by Roman Abramovich, one of these Russian fake oligarchs. And so when you have a property like that, you can you, you probably have to assume that your property is bugged and you can bug a property so bad that you cannot get rid of the box. Even if you call in the specialists with the suitcases of equipment and they scan everything, you can't find all the bugs. This has happened to embassy buildings that was so properly bugged that 
you have to tear down the whole building and start over. So you're under surveillance by different groups. Uh, you're under pressure by different groups. And then if you go against the consensus of the group, or you're trying to subvert it a little bit, you can get into deadly trouble. Not pleasant to be a rich person sometimes. And also, uh, and also when... Um, and you have to worry about security all the time, you know, you, where are your children, somebody may, may be abducting your children and you can't really move freely. Uh, you have to be in that prison, that golden prison with the great view, but how boring does that get? Right, the same stupid ocean view day after day, the same super yacht, and it's like, it's the same sun shining down on everybody. And it's the same water that everybody's swimming in. Right? How boring does that get? I mean, you can't walk around like a normal human being. You're in constant danger. Um, and also, I was I was walking around with my walking around with my daughter, who's 14. And I'm thinking these people, these super rich people, they can't buy youth. You know, they can try whatever to slow down their aging, but they can't buy the youth, and they can't buy some of the physicalities of all these people running around. You know, this. The, Right next to the ocean, as people are running around with weighted vests. So they, they jog with these weighted vests and they, they're trying to be in great shape. And uh, and some of these rich people, once they get into drinking and they get into other things, um, they, that can leave permanent damage to your brain and to your, your, your feeling and your personality. So you can never get that original brain back. You can never feel um, like a normal person again. So it's 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 not... It's not all that it's, uh, you know, described usually. It's not what, not necessarily what people think it is. So uh, ask yourself how quickly would this politician, that influencer, whatever, sell me out? It doesn't matter what they say to you so much. Usually people are not professionals anyway in these important topics. Um, what do they do? What do they do? How quickly would they sell me out? And... You also have to be careful. Um, you also have to be careful with people who hate, who hate material things. They are going against human nature so much. They must have been fanaticized. And they, they may sell you out for non-material things like ideological concepts or a certain religious concept or some other group loyalty. It's also a reason why they would sell you out even if they don't pretend to not like the fancy watches, right? So it's always good if, you, if you're around people who value material things, don't have an unhealthy relationship to these things, but have aspirations. And, and they, because it is very important for us human beings to, to achieve something every once in a while and treat ourselves and have something, something beautiful, a symbol of success or whatever. Um, but of course, don't be around people who will sell you out, who will sell you down the river for that fancy, nice watch. And it's like, there's, um, what I like about Rolex watches is how they look and also what they represent, because there's a lot of people who had achieved cool things wearing these watches. Um, it's not necessarily the watches only for bankers and scammy people and, you know, pirates, basically. So, um, yeah, so you see the property listings for tens of millions of euros. It's just like your regular bank, actually. Your regular, looks like your regular, um, you know, agency for real estate. So they have the windows and they have the listings. and But it's not like 500,000 home or 800,000 uh, 800, euro home. It's more like 10 million, 15 million, 20, 25 million euros. So, yeah, I thought more people in Monaco were wealthy. However, a tiny fraction are actually really wealthy. Most people live in small apartments, drive normal cars, and have tiny boats in the harbor. So, um, yeah, um, you, you, you should copy certain things that work. Don't copy the really evil and irrational things. Know where the line is where pragmatism ends and pure silly evil begins. So you can look at this whole thing like an amateur 
you know, every rich person's evil or, you know, everybody who ever wielded power you only did the wrong things and it's all just bad and you shouldn't you shouldn't have power and there shouldn't be any power and there shouldn't be any control. That's not how the world works. You have to be pragmatic. But being pragmatic the right way it ta takes knowledge and experience. That's a complicated thing to, to achieve. So know where the line is or where an objective line would be and also know where your subjective lines are. You know, what what are you about and where's where's the line for somebody else now so i was in i was in the south the south of france when that tenet story hit right you probably heard that this was um you probably heard that so this was a, a company called tenet and according to the department of justice tenet received russian money um, and then Tenet went to these influencers uh, like Tim Pool and others uh, and said, we have a great opportunity for you. There's a rich person that works with us and he would like to or he would finance your show. We're going to give you hundreds of thousands per month sometimes. So you make these videos for YouTube, right? So this is your budget then and you can hire these people or you can... You know, keep the people you've already hired. You can pay your writers and directors and producers and the technical guys and the, the, the office people and the people who do your taxes. You can hire all these people and you can make, you, you can keep what's left and then you can afford the nice watch. You can afford the cool trucks and you can afford the sports car maybe and you can, uh, you can have the status associated with it. You can impress women with it. You can impress other people with it and, and look cool right and if you don't take that offer you're pretty much on your own and you may lose these opportunities and they might never come back so you may end up just another face in that ocean of youtube no fancy watch no fancy cars no no super status with the women and blah 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 so take that offer that's 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 what they said basically and um so they took the offer and tenant got busted. So the Department of Department of Justice is saying that um, these were the Russians behind it. They were pissed that RT Russia Russia Today was no longer allowed to broadcast to people uh, in the West. Uh, and so uh, they used some of that money. They funneled that money to tenant, and tenant was handing out the money like cookies, like candy, uh, to these influencers. Right. So then these influencers they presented themselves as the victims. They had no idea. They said they had no idea and they kept full control over what they were broadcasting. Really? Uh, so first of all, these people were handed information about a businessman called Edward Gregorian, who was supposedly financing the whole thing, but that person didn't exist. There were no media reports with that guy. You couldn't find him anywhere. The photo was fake. It was just a licensed stock photo. So a little bit of investigation would have actually uh, would have told you that this is a fake person. He doesn't exist. So it's shady. Uh, and of course, there, there was this German guy, Hubert Seipel, star journalist or former star journalist, and um, he was he became more and more pro-Russian, outrageously so. He got close access, very close access to Vladimir Putin. Uh, you know, in 2012 and even beyond that. Uh, was one of the only journalists who got that close and went on a hunting trip with Putin. And he got busted yeah, because the information leaked about a contract. Uh, he was getting he was getting uh, uh, six hundred thousand euros for a single book project. So everybody was speculating what other pro you know what other monies did he get? He said it was only that he kept full control over what he was doing. Um, and and he claimed that he used that money for his work. So he claimed he wasn't buying fancy watches with it or fancy vacations or fancy this, fancy that, and maybe impress the ladies with it. We're supposed to believe that? You believe that? Do you trust these people? Right? This is what you have to decide. So it's it's hard sometimes to tell exactly what's going on uh, when you don't have enough resources and, and, and 
uh, government power, you cannot always get exactly to the truth. Um, but sometimes the information has to be enough and you, ha you have to make a personal judgment. Do I trust this person or do I not trust this person? This is also how the intelligence world is dealing with these things. Oftentimes, they don't actually get to the bottom of something and they have to make assessments and say, okay, we, there's no reason for us to trust these people or that person or that organization. So this is just how it is. So Tim Pool used to be a reporter at Vice Media. Benny Johnson was at BuzzFeed and the Independent Journal Review. Then they turned to MAGA types. Uh, and this Rubin guy used to be uh, like a baseline libertarian. For a time, he was at the progressive network, the Young Turks, and then he became a right winger and had the Rubin Report on Glenn Beck's The Blaze. And uh, they, they also they, they severed ties with another person attached to Tenet. So The Blaze, I think they got rid of two people at least. Uh, they had Lauren Southern, these names, and uh, together these people had six million, uh, six million subscribers on YouTube combined. So, in the, when you read the indictment, you get some of these details. For example, the tenant guys were saying, oh, you should, you should cover this and you should um, post this stuff. Supposedly, this was a video by Tucker Carlson visiting a supermarket in Russia. So, I'm making these suggestions. You should cover this. You should repost this. And some of these tenant people or these people attached to tenant said, oh, it's, it's too corny for me. I don't like it. But then these tenant people said, no, but you have to do it. You really have to do it. And then they relented and said, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover this. So who knows what other information is out there and what the American authorities know. So there might be more trouble for these influencers. And, and if somebody gets caught with something worse, right? And there's another, cur another uh, current example of this. If somebody gets really really busted would that person get let, let themselves get recruited by the u.s government by an intelligence agency or the, the fbi or something as a source would they take would they go to court and, and accept the punishment or whatever or would they sell out would they sell out their fellow people employees their audience would they get recruited and then say what the government wants them to say. It's also something you have to uh, remember. There's, there's also this whole criminal, uh, you know, aspect uh, to it. Or another reason to sell out people, especially the audience. Um, so yeah, this is maybe just the tip of the iceberg that we're seeing here. Of course, the FBI was talking about a. Uh, there was an an FBI affidavit talking about. 2,800 2, influencers who are viewed as collaborators, possible collaborators uh, for the, you know, with the Russians. So that's just it. And you can, uh, you can assume that the NSA is looking at everything and that other agencies are looking at everything. And they also have not just digital surveillance, they also have these human assets, confidential sources everywhere. So they know your secrets or they know the secrets of these influencers. So if they get caught, they will probably um, become informants as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not fun being an influencer, actually. You know, it's, it's, really, it's really tough, even if you have a larger audience, because that means you got all these costs, all this overhead. You have to pay people because usually an influencer... They cannot really write. They cannot really produce. They don't know how to connect all the techn technical stuff. And they don't know how to, you know, with the servers and everything and, and, and whatnot. Uh, so they need people to do that for them. You have to pay them, right? But you are, you have the risk of the, the, the entrepreneur. You may actually lose everything. And that's scary. And so if you're falling behind or if you're stagnating and your costs are rising and you become panicked so what do you do it's limited things you can do i mean even to get to that point you have to do what's commonly popular right so you have to do a commonly popular thing you standard left standard right alt right extreme right standard libertarian all these controlled areas that are controlled by very rich people you have to pick one of those and if you tell people what they want to hear 
And that's the first problem. This is why you don't have great media out there. This is why usually you, you don't get any, you don't get a real sense of reality out there if you're just on the web. If you read books, good books, that's another matter. But with these online influencers, you're not really getting reality. So that's kind of the first sellout. You do a standard thing. You go with the standard flow. You say what the audience wants to hear. Uh, you reinforce their irrational beliefs because that's what sells. And then if you've got all this competition out there, you may want to try to become more radical, to stand out, but then you get legal problems and then you know the, the advertisers don't like you and other companies may boycott you, so that's not really fun either. Um, sometimes you even turn into, you know, do criminal things. And at some point, you may even accept Russian money or the money of some hedge fund, you know, some, some super rich people. And then you give your audience the perspective of the super rich, right? So this is kind of, this is kind of how it goes. And, and there was another, uh, there's another, um, aspect I would like to mention and uh this concerns platforms like uh x uh rumble and telegram and i've talked about telegram before um telegram was not really profitable and they said they don't care about making a profit because they have russian investors and, and, and arab investors and weird investors and they have this crypto scheme and that's how they kind of make money but they don't want to play by any sort of realistic realistic rules and it's it's you cannot really know what the people are really intending who who program telegram and what what they're really about and what they do with your information so not really transparent not really what you need and you you, you looked at this guy this what was was it was he called a uh, pavel durov who was re recently arrested in france actually where where i just spent a very stressful holiday um so um yeah, a lot of oligarchs lost their stuff in France because they, they had no citizenship, so they had no rights whatsoever. Um, but if you have a passport for France, you fall under French jurisdiction and they can arrest you, right? Sucks, doesn't it? And so that guy, that Durov guy, he was staging himself, you know, with, with the six-pack abs and and the yoga photos and, and, and the supermodel girlfriend and, and flying, flying a private jet and all that stuff. So he was loving this wealth, but he still presented himself t to his followers as kind of this, this hero genius Robin Hood. He wants to give freedom to the people. He wants to take risks for the people and be that hero for the people. Does he really care about you? Does he really care about, w would he choose that lifestyle over you? Would he choose the fancy watches and the girlfriends and the private jets and all the perks would he choose the perks or would he choose you and you saw how little people were actually spending money on telegram you know how little people would be would it be accepting of monthly fees even if it's just a few dollars or how little how few people would actually accept more advertising on telegram and would accept content actual proper content moderation how how few people would actually um accept that they they wouldn't support him they wouldn't pay back all the money that is spent on these servers and they said we need hundreds of millions of dollars every year to rent the server spaces and make everything run he would be left stranded if it was he would he would be a complete loser he would be a complete failure if it was just the support of the people so that's why he was friends with these uh, Arab investors and his office was in an Arab country. And the Russian investors and, and you know, that's he loves the luxury, I think, a lot more than he loves you out there. And so don't ever do anything shady with Telegram. Do not ever trust your, your freedom, your wealth, your life with tele and to Telegram. Just don't. So then... The shares of the right-wing conservative video platform Rumble fell in value after the debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Investors are cautious. Rumble is still a small company with sales or revenues of 
79 million US dollars in the last four quarters and an operating loss of 150 million US dollars in that period, making it deeply unprofitable. It's a risky investment. Conservative users in particular should do their part to ensure that platforms can exist at all and not tap into strange sources of money. People are used to everything being free and every, everyone being able to post bonkers material. Now, um, I just mentioned the Tenet scandal. And the video platform Rumble has advertised Tenet Media several times in recent months and shown videos from the company's channel in its editor picks section. In its source code, the platform describes its editor picks section as the absolute best of Rumble. So they can decide what people will be more likely to click on, what becomes more successful. Now, we don't know if we don't know if, if Rumble, uh, we don't know if Rumble took any Russian money. But of course, that would be a question in the back of my mind. So Rumble saw a sharp increase in user numbers after the major wave of censorship on YouTube, but was not profitable, profitable back in 2021 it hasn't really been profitable uh, since. Rumble received investments from venture capitalists Peter Thiel, Vivek Ramaswamy and JD Vance in May 2022. One. So this gives it somewhat of a more mainline credibility, but it's also questionable because if you look at Peter Thiel, he's so wealthy and rich and he loves surveillance and he's he's just, he's on another level. He's not a peasant, right? And he, he has no loyalty to the peasants. Rab Ramaswamy, he wants to be famous too. He wants to be a big shot. J.D. Vance wants to be a big shot. And he never wants to go back to his roots, which were very simple. He doesn't want to be with the peasants any longer. Uh, so, yeah, and so, and these people, they also represent the mainline Republican Party, which is very aristocratic. So there's not enough space for everybody in these upper circles. So if you're not, if you're not at least, if you're not, not at least in the, in the top 10%, they don't really care about you. And even if you are in the top 10%, um, it's still a major, major struggle for you. Um... So you better be in the top 1% and even the top 1%, um, even those guys, those people are um, not equal. There's a strong, very strong curve, right? Where even just a tiny fraction of them, they have the true power and, and are in control. So in this funding round, Rumble was valued at around $500 million, but it's not profitable. It can collapse any day theoretically. So Trump Media and Technology Group announced it had entered into a comprehensive technology and cloud services agreement with Rumble. Um, and uh, Rumble became a publicly traded company. 2023, Rumble received exclusive rights to stream the Republican presidential primary debates online. Okay, sounds kind of nice. So the company is gaining uh, traction. But would it be possible to use Rumble would it be like, is it, is it really possible to use Rumble to talk about the problems within the Republicans uh, in a constructive way? You know, not just to talk down to people, not just really to, uh, to weaken the Republican Party, but to really focus on, focus on the problems and really solving them. Would you be able to use Rumble? Would they feature your stuff as editor's picks or boost them at all because they don't want to lose their connection to the Republican Party and and most powerful people within the Republicans they don't want to lose their status they don't want to solve problems they just want to preserve what they have so that's the next problem right um yeah rumble Rumble prohibits harassment racism anti-semitism copyright infringement obviously illegal content yeah so they they moderate more than some other platforms out there who are completely bonkers but after the rush after the russian invasion after the after the russian invasion of ukraine in 2022 rumble did not ban russian state media from the site that's why rumble rumble was blocked in france in november 2022 and refused to comply with the country's demand to remove russian state media accounts in May 2024 rumble was blocked in russia for failing to comply with the russian government's request to remove content which Chris Pavlovsky viewed as censorship. Now, how corrupt is Russia? How much do these people in Russia 
love the watches. I mean, you've seen some of the stuff, right, on the media? When uh, you see a guy, you, you see some guy talk some stuff into the camera, and then you, you look at the watch, and you're going like, okay, this is a, this is an AP, or this is a Patek, or this is some something uh, along those lines. And then you, you recognize the model, and you're thinking, okay, this is a $50,000 watch, or this is an $80,000... $80,000 watch, right? And you're thinking, okay, that's that that's pretty disgusting for a person like that because th these those are not self-made guys who make Russia stronger and the people stronger and they really get things moving. These are these are bastards. These are complete bastards. They will sell out the Russian citizens for that watch and they will sell out you for that watch and all the stuff that comes with it. And sometimes even in in uh, in Europe, um, sometimes. These politicians, they wear these watches on television and then they get criticism for it. And sometimes they just remove the watch and they just, you know, put it in their pocket. And when they're confronted with that, they'll just say, well, I, I don't want to get it. Well, I don't want to have that knocking noise, right? Because if you have it on the table and you, you knock your watch on the table, it makes noises and you don't want that. No, they take it off so they don't get caught, you know, wearing this wearing an AP or a Patek or it was something like that. Um, yeah, it's it's horrendously, comically corrupt, you know, the, the, the Russian system. I mean, the, the perks they have, and even down to the officer level in the military, they will sell out the soldiers. They will strip or have these tanks stripped of certain pieces and then sell them on the black market to foreign countries. And then these tanks are not combat ready. Or they just uh, exchange uh, one piece of equipment with a cheaper piece of equipment. Or they, uh, they will, um, you know, spend government money on these um, missile defense shields and, and the, the radar systems and all that stuff. And so they will say, we bought these military-grade computer chips that are specially insulated. But they don't actually buy the quality stuff, the, the military spec one. They buy the cheaper one and they pocket the, the rest of the money. And even regular equipment for soldiers, you know, boots and this and that and pouch, pouches and, and all the nylon gear. They will actually strip these facilities, the storage facilities, sell it on the black market. And then the soldiers have to rebuy, or their their relatives have to rebuy the stuff from um, you know these online auction or, or trade platforms, buy that stuff again and send it to the soldiers. Total, utter corruption. The most disgusting stuff ever. I mean, if if somebody does really cool things, let him have his fancy watch. Let him have his uh, nice cars and his nice house. That's that's important, you know, because um. It's it's difficult sometimes to to get that positive reward feeling when you're doing a specific complicated task, or it's a repetitive task and you're really good at it, right? Um, and it's hard sometimes to feel that satisfaction because the world is so complicated and you're just one piece of a bigger puzzle. Um, and 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 thus, by getting these objects, getting the pleasure from these objects, um, this sort of makes us function better, right? But if 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 that's if if somebody's just a bastard, if somebody's not even good at his job, but he gets that watch and he gets that gets these cars, not a good idea. Not a good idea. So recently, an email was sent to Rumble users. It said, Dunkin' Donuts has decided to not advertise on Rumble because they say the site's right-wing culture is too polarizing. So because Rumble censors more radical material than BitChute, for example, some users complain. They say, Rumble, Rumble is not uh, aggressive enough. Rumble is, too, uh, Rumble is too weak. At the same time, large corporations like Dunkin' Donuts still do not approve of the Rumble platform. So what is Rumble going to do? become super radical, hoping to make money that way. But where does that end? What problems does that bring with you? If you get all the crazies on your platform, uh, sooner or later, some 
absolute nutbag user of Rumble will do something horrible in the real world and then it will get traced back to Rumble and then you get all this negative publicity and then you can't even rent the server space and you can't even have software running on those servers. Um, and you have to comply then with the Department of Justice or some uh, other uh, government entities and then you give all the user data and then the users hate you. Right, because there's also very problematic behavior of the regular folks out there. They make a lot of mistakes, and we need to contribute so that people don't make these mistakes anymore. Right, because on average, there's like for every thousand users, for for a thousand users, maybe two or three will actually support a project. So these three people. Basically, these three people have to pay for the other uh, nine nine hundred and then ninety seven people, and then there still needs to be a profit, so you're not just breaking even. And this is a huge problem. Another email states: there are no longer uh, there are no other large companies that fight for freedom like we do. We're putting everything on the line. A CEO of Telegram was recently arrested for it. Advertisers are boycotting our companies to cut off our economic lifeline, but they underestimate our popular support. If you want to help us, join Rumble Premium. If 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 Rumble Premium gets big enough, you'll help us change the rules of the game and fight for freedom of speech. Now, a company like Rumble can finance itself through its users. How else is it supposed to work? Should it accept Russian money to survive? What kind of content do users think they'll get then? Certainly not content that really serves American interests or other Western interests. Should they bag some super rich people? Maybe hedge funds? What kind of content do users think they'll get then? Should they let advertising partners like Dunkin' Donuts boss them around? Now, X or Twitter has similar problems. Some complain that the platform is not radical enough. Most advertising partners think it is too radical. In Europe, there are problems with the laws because of the crazy stuff that's posted on there. Hardly anyone seems to want to... Hardly anybody seems to want to pay the few dollars a month to make X profitable. Now, I have a German X account and I also have an English. Um, an English... English language uh, X account and for both accounts I pay these small fees per month obviously most people will not even do that so there's been headlines that traffic is up um, people actually like the platform and it's it's uh, you know they they got rid of a lot of these employees and a lot of the, the wokies got rid of all of them platform works it, it works really well um, but it's unprofitable so they're serving more users and they're happy with the platform but they're not making enough money because of the users it's their fault right and there's headlines in the media where you know people talk about what the price was of x and and the purchasing price and how little they actually get to make the money back and how long it will take to to keep make it make it profitable? And we also recently saw the leak of um, the investor list, some really creepy entities who helped with the purchase of Twitter. So, yeah, it's is um, how much influence is there on Twitter by these by these investors? How much is you know Elon going to listen to to the folks out there? How much? Is he going to listen to these investors? Not a good, not a good situation. I mean, it's not. I'm not trying to be just mean and destructive. Um, I I really like the te technical technicalities of the platform, the, the way it works. Um, don't like a lot of the content on it, but you know that's just how the people are. Um, yeah, but it, the people should be able to make it profitable, right? So th that's their fault. A lot of it is the fault of these people out there, and it it's goes goes with with so many other topics out there. You know, it's 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 important to to point at these elites and to point at these people in power and, and all the evil stuff they're doing. But you also have to be aware of the massive problems in the normal class and the peasants, all the stuff they do wrong. And we've been conditioned so much that most of the peasants would rather be you know, a super peasant. They want to be a powerful peasant and, and boss around other peasants and impress all these other peasants and dominate other peasants. But they will not actually do a useful thing for other people.
That's a huge problem. So don't glorify the people. There's, there's, there's so many things we have to actually solve. So, yeah, um, it's clear that more the more sensible citizens show little initiative, and the radicals, on the other hand, they show very show a lot of initiative, but they do most of the things wrong. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the situation with right wing uh, with right wing media. So uh, a lot of people hopped on the, the Trump bandwagon, and uh, I, I've been super critical of Trump um, as a person. So I'm, I'm really not talking about these, these concepts. I'm not, you know, confusing certain ideas and concepts with Trump. I'm, I'm looking at the concepts. I'm looking at, at the person of Trump. Um, and uh, uh, for some reason, Trump got to be the candidate, and, and, and for some reason he won, even though he was very much unqualified for the job. And it became such a hype in some circles, um, that this hype created some millionaires, influencers, you know, some of the, you know, the cult movements uh, around it, and some of these older activists, you know, the the Joneses out there and whatnot. So they actually made a lot of money riding that Trump wave. And they sometimes they would tell critical stuff about Trump or they would get mad at Trump but that's just a trial balloon because they figure they can't lose that segment of their audience and and so they have to go with whichever way the audience is going and so um they're not telling what the audience would need to hear because they don't want to take that risk they don't well, that financial hit so a lot of people got greedy and it's like we saw that with Fox News as well when they were reporting on the election of 2020. Now, with every election, you, you have to look closely, especially when it's a close election, and you have to be really professional in your reporting. You know, is there something that's not, not what it's, it's something not according to the rules, and then you have to be really, really tough and really professional and get your ducks in a row and, and run reports and also take legal measures. But you can't go around spewing nonsense because that's that gets you the attention. Because that will get you in trouble. Shoddy work will get you in trouble. And that happened to Fox News, that happened to others, and then happened to Newsmax. And I think the Newsmax thing is going to court. I think Fox settled for a lot of money uh, with these uh, voting machine uh, companies. Uh, so yeah, it's not, it's 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 tough, right? And same with Mr. Jones. You know, when he reported on the Sandy Hook thing, and he got money and more money and more fame for it. But then it backfired and he got sued, right? So you, you become too greedy and eventually you will fall because at some point other people will use their means available to knock you down. Uh, yeah, so um, of course we had the, the, the debate Trump, Trump versus Harris and there was a, a Newsweek article uh, Republicans pine, you know, should, Republicans say sh maybe we should have gone with we should have gone with uh, Nikki Haley and DeSantis because uh, uh, Haley could have beat, uh, you know, uh, Joe Biden easily and, and probably even Kamala easily. But for some reason, for various reasons, people stuck with Trump and now they're stuck with him. And it's a very close race. It's way too close, much closer than it should be. Um, so from a purely mathematical standpoint you could have chosen a candidate um who was just popular with most groups um somebody with a credible past somebody who is who's never been radical somebody who's been a good person and trustworthy and um you know good with women or good with men you know a decent family and, and all that could have picked somebody like that and put a lot of advertisement into it and and just win the race decisively so nobody's whining about, you know, manipulations and, and stuff. But now it's such a very, very close race. And you just can't trust any media out there. You can't trust the mainstream media. You can't really trust um, these big outlets. They sort of in the last years and maybe 10, 10 to 15 years, they kind of went away from, you know, or they, they reduced outright lying. They were just more omitting things or or just um playing dumb or jumping to conclusions right 
So, um, yeah, sometimes they still uh, manipulate grossly, right? When something they don't like, the mental state of Joe Biden, they would say, no, that's just a horrendous lie from the right wing. They will lie about it. He's, he's in perfect condition. He's, he's great. He's just working fine. No, he was almost, he, he was out of it. Um, but for the most part, even when it comes to serious topics, when it comes to Ukraine, when it comes to the pandemic, a lot of what main, a lot of what mainstream media does is they will just omit the tough stuff, the classified stuff. They will not even try to get into that. Um, the background, the the security background, and the bigger pictures, they will not get into that. So they say these things to you. They're objectively they're objectively true and correct, but they leave out the the cool stuff, the real stuff. So you still do not end up with a proper view on reality. Now, um, so alternative media, um, alternative media, on the other hand, has done the exact opposite. Now, I remember during the Bush era when, uh, you know, conspiracy media or alternative media was a lot smaller, um, you know, in those days, I remember they were making an effort or some platforms were making an effort to be factual and to, to try to provide quality and have good guests on, have good stories on and quote from real books and, and, and whatnot. Um, they were trying to make an effort and they got some credibility back then. You know, this is when, when more people started to listen. And there was still a lot of mistakes and it was still bad material and, and, and it was still not scientific enough and professional enough, but, but they were making an effort. But since around 2000, 2008, the quality has gone down so much in alternative media it, beca- it became a constant stream of lying, distorting, and just copying from the Russians. And there's also like the, the CNP, the Council for National Policy, uh, who's also got a large influence over the supposed alternative, um, supposed independent media. So a lot of lying and distorting and, and just massive lying, and that's sort of become, that sort of became a huge problem. Um, and so you can't really trust any media out there you barely can trust any media out there when it comes to these important topics, you know, Ukraine or the pandemic or the next election. And, you know, maybe people go crazy over the results. So, um, so then, um, when you, when you watch the debate, obviously any topic they would touch, they would not give a clear, honest picture of what they really want, want to do or what they're, people the people behind them really want to do how they're going to do it it was just a bunch of you know worn out talking points really so harris was presenting herself as a capitalist she's supposedly she's from the middle class she's a peasant she she loves the peasant middle class and she loves small businesses and she wants to give tax breaks to small businesses she must know that most businesses per se fail especially small startup businesses they almost all fail and especially in this economy, nobody has any money left over to spend, to, to eat out and to really, you know, buy these products and these services that you don't actually really need. Um, and, and yeah, she wants to give some money to families, even though it becomes much, much harder uh, to actually have kids and, and really maintain a relationship and actually not hate your life uh, every day. Um, so yeah, that, that wasn't really, uh, convincing at all. Trump did call her a Marxist. He should have made, turned that into a bigger point. On the other hand, even though he distanced himself from project, project 2025, and I've done a video on that, he still represents a privileged class and he's, it's, he still represents those circles who like to remain among themselves it's kind of the aristocratic mindset. And I've talked about that before on a show with Nevin Gasek. It's a problem if one party is going in the direction of more an aristocracy, while the other party, the Democrats, they're becoming pure Marxism. Because ultimately, uh, you know, real life socialism, they they didn't, um, in, in real life socialism, they didn't invent any new thing. It's just baseline old school imperialism almost medieval type or ancient type imperialism. The Soviet Union was a very basic old style empire. Just control the territory, totally control your people, expand the territory, the end. And and you want to control everybody in the world at some point or control enough of the world so you have this Pax Romana. You know, you have 
finally you have peace, right? So, uh, so socialists really didn't invent anything new. It's just based on imperialism. So whether you call it socialism, what you're trying to build, or whether you have some sort of a covert or have covert um, aristocracy, the result is pretty much the same, especially for the 90%. You will not own anything, and you will you you will not you, you will not own anything, and you will not be happy. Um. And then few percent, they have to be hyper disciplined. They don't really have that much either, but they they have to fight hard to keep that stuff, uh, not fall down the ladder, and and so they don't join the peasants. Um, and then only a tiny elite actually has fun in life, and has security in life can happen to you in an aristocratic system, can happen to you in, in, in a socialist system. So that's not good either. Uh, and also, yeah, of course, there the other topics like abortion and foreign policy, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I've talked, I, I talk about this, these topics enough, so I'm not going to repeat uh, that right now. Um, so obviously, you should vote Republican, because there's better people on the Republican side. Because you're not voting for the candidate, really. You're voting for the party, and you, you really, you really need to vote Republican. Don't sit on the fence. Uh, don't try to punish Trump by sitting on the fence, or don't try to punish Trump by, uh, you know, voting Democrat. You're just going to end up punishing yourself and punishing other people in America, right? So, so you you really should, you really should. Um, you really need to go out and you you go out and you vote you vote Republican and you think ahead into the future and you be more be more involved you know support better people in the Republican Party and and support better media so you don't get this craziness any longer that's just very destructive people wasted so much money on Trump and 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 the wasted so much money on certain influencers and that money will not come back and these these hours spent they will never come back um no what i what i really noticed watching the debate was on the one hand trump being trump being focused you know he wasn't he wasn't in a good mood but he doesn't have to be he was he seemed like he seemed like um he seemed determined very clear um and like like we've seen seen of him so we, we we know his limitations and we we know who he is it's not a surprise um but who is kamala you know she's kind of the the cat she's kind of the cat in the bag you're supposed to buy and what i specifically noticed what i specifically noticed about kamala harris was her slurred speech in some appearances she seemed drunk to me if if i think if she was um she was in traffic and she gets pulled over as a regular citizen and she talks like this she would probably have that's how i imagine it she would have to do these dui tests and and couldn't refuse those tests or would would be arrested if she refused the tests or failed those tests um so there's that right She's some appearances. She seemed outright drunk, hammered. In this debate, there was still a slight slurriness present at all times. You have to listen closely to it, and that's what particularly worries me about her. Now she's 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 been semi open about drinking, while other candidates uh, don't drink. There was a San, Fran San Francisco Chronicle article. It said Kamala Harris has good taste in wine. Well, that's that's like a euphemism if I ever heard one. Uh, Kamala Harris uses a pseudonym for a wine club membership. She bet against Senator Ted Cruz on the outcome of the 2017 World Series with two bottles of wine. And she always kind of sounds slurry. To me, I would be worried about I would be worried about that. Um, so go out and vote Republican. Uh, now, there's been some people who, um, on the web, uh, influencers, you know, of, from who some of the, some of them who became kind of uh, semi-famous over the last few years, and they're telling people to not vote. 
or they're telling people to not vote Republican. And it's it's just not it just doesn't it just doesn't work like that. You know, the activism will not solve the problem. You cannot really put enough pressure on anybody to change these problems. You have to vote Republican and have to be involved within the Republican Party and force it to change. And you cannot force it to change if you sit on your butt or vote the other party. So be very, very careful. Now, of course, there's there's uh, the the usual debate, and this was even in the in the in the presidential debate here. This these accusations of well, Trump Trump was talking Trump was talking positive things about the Russians. Well, that was just a strategy that that came from General Kellogg. You know, say say some nice things about the Russians. Um, but then be super tough, really, really tough on the Russians and, and other groups as well. The Iranians and Hamas and, you know, uh, and that's kind of a, a smart way to do it. You're really tough. You show the Russians you cannot really achieve your goals through violence. But there's always a diplomatic door open. If, if the Russians start to behave or if some other people become the leadership of Russia, then they're diplomatic solutions. That's all this is. That's all this was. That, that's all it was. Um, and so there's this ongoing debate, you know, with the, 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 the Russians, the Russians are influencing, you know, the Russians are influencing the election. Of course they will try. And if you look at the literature, you know, KGB literature, um, or KGB related literature of, from the Cold War, it becomes clear. Every expert knows the Russians, the Russians always try to influence Western elections. They will always try. They usually fail, or even if their preferred candidate wins, it doesn't really end up the way the Russians like it to be, like it to end up. Um, but they still try. And with the U.S., when it comes to the U.S. election, the preferred goal of the Russians would just be to have chaos in America, for example. So for the Russians, it makes uh, for the Russians it makes sense to have a very very narrow race in America. So this is why they would actually promote the Democrats and the Republicans and just be polarizing, right? Just be extremely polarizing because that polarization creates chaos and distrust. And this is what the Russians then want to use. But usually the Russians don't get what they want. And a lot of people who who get caught up in the radical radicalization, a lot of people, they get shoved under the bus or they just become... Um, uh, casualties in that information war because they go overboard they lose friends or family members or they just get into legal trouble or, or whatever and um, when it's all said and done the world keeps turning life goes on but you're stuck with the damage so be very careful about about what you do uh, speaking of the Russians uh, was a recent debate of course about the missiles, uh, you know, President Biden's deliberations with Prime Minister Keir Starmer, Britain, the deliberations about whether to allow Ukraine to attack Russia with long-range Western weapons. So this has become uh, a very important issue. Um, so there are many, there, there are different options here at play. Okay, so if you use these longer rockets or these longer-range rockets you can actually seriously damage the Russian effort. And they would then be presented with a set of, or, or be left with a set of options. Withdraw. The Russians, that's actually realistic. The Russians, they've done it before, multiple times. The Russians could withdraw, get rid of Putin, you know, maybe just in a staged way, but still they get rid of Putin and say, it was all his fault. And they present these new KG, former KGB guys and say, oh, we have a new new leadership, now it's a reset, uh, we want to trade again, we want to sell gas to Europe, and it's all going to be fine now. And then they try again at a later stage. Um, or the Russians could actually, the Russians could actually use nuclear weapons, they could use chemical we weapons, they could use biological weapons. Um, or, and this has become sort of the more, more uh, uh, probable option, the Russians the Russians could openly announce that they are very, very close to China after all. Or they phrase it differently. They say we've just had a new agreement with the Chinese, even though that's not new at all. And and so that in that agreement, 
it, in in that agreement, the the Chinese could overpower Ukraine and the Chinese troops when they get into this whole thing, the Chinese could overwhelm uh, also Poland and other parts of Europe or maybe even all of Europe. This has been on Russian television recently. You know them these people saying it on television. You know we we just align ourselves with the Chinese, then we overrun Europe and then we have the 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 Atlantic Ocean between us and the evil United States. And at some point they might of course might of course attack the United States. Not good. Uh so um so yeah, a lot of this war is still shrouded in secrecy. So you don't exactly know what's going on at the very top and this is something you have to remember. There are things that you don't know. There are questions, specific questions that we are aware of where we don't have the answer. But there's also stuff that's completely outside of our view. So we're not even questioning this stuff or we don't, we don't even look for specific things oftentimes. And that's kind of where the professional mindset kicks in. You have to know all the context and you have to look for or reconstruct the secret sphere. So the, the Russians could withdraw. They, it could escalate together with the Chinese. There may be a limited world war. And maybe a limited world war would still be the best option out of a set of other options. Could be. Be terrible. Utterly terrible. But it, it could, could be much worse. Um, there may be a full-blown world war where you know most people on the planet die or a lot of people die and then we don't know what's left um and and then there may be a, even a repetition or there may be a world government afterwards and of course powers have always settled with each other if they think that settling is better than a real war they will settle or they will even align themselves they would they would intermarry they would just entangle each other so they can't betray each other anymore now, this has been done so many times over and over, these classical empires, especially Europe, and it created some very long-lasting structures. You have the superstructures like, like Welfs, Vettans, and Reginars, and they have all these aristocratic lines uh, within them, and, and they became so dominant um, for 1,200 years, so huge, and nobody's even aware of them properly. I mean, it took me a lot of time to, to even become aware of them, because if you're really powerful, people don't know about you. You know, this, they, don't, they don't really know about you at all. They don't really know you exist, really. Uh, that's true power. That's something different than playing a billionaire or being a fake billionaire, you know, with lots of, uh, you know, strings attached to you. That's much different. Um, so, yeah. So, um, maybe the superpowers already have secretly settled. Maybe they have a, uh, they have a script ready to, to implement. Um, maybe they will settle in the near future. Maybe they've settled a long time ago. So this this is all the secret stuff that we're not aware. And so the best strategy for us, the people, is to reconstruct the secret sphere and then ask the tough questions and bring it out in the public, bring it out in the open, put some real pressure on the different superpowers. Not pick one of them like a crazy person, Right? Um, I mean, sure, you gotta have loyalty to towards you. You need to have loyalty towards the West, the really good parts of the West, the potential of the West. But don't just follow silly elite, right? Don't just blindly follow the the Western elites. Don't blindly trust the rush, the corrupt Russians, crazy Russians, or the crazy Chinese. Um, and and this is sort of how most media is constructed. You're supposed to choose one of the superpowers and be blindly loyal to these elites. And you're supposed to choose at least one of these standard ideologies, whether it's left, center, right, libertarian, or traditional conspiracy uh, ideology. You're supposed to pick one of these control things so you can never win. You know, this is like a, a silly game where you pick door number one, two, three, four, but you're always funneled into the same direction. You cannot win. So put some real pressure on these people because there's so, such big secrets out there. Not even really powerful people are supposed to know these secrets. 
And so if you, if you destroy these information barriers, that's how you get some real results, some actual results. So, um, yeah, so be very careful what you share online uh, about the Ukraine war. Now, of course, the topic of this today's episode being corruption, you probably saw bogus stories regarding uh, bogus stories regarding Zelensky. You know, he bought the Bugatti, which is not true. Uh, you know, the, the the palaces and the thing and whatnot. So, so he was a really hardworking guy. He could have studied. I think he was he was about to study law or something, and he could have been moderately successful and even more successful, just aligning himself with these oligarchs. And there was really no other way. Uh, oftentimes, you had to try to get into some sort of a position. And he became an entertainer, he'd be political, even political entertainer, uh, which meant political power in Ukraine because everybody was just watching television instead of really finding good media or finding good books. Um, so it's not like you can just whine about corruption. You can whine about oligarchs. Um, it's, it's always the fault. It's the fault of the people if you don't get smart, if you don't use your opportunities. If everybody's just believing the television, then you know, or or crap on the internet, then it's the fault of the people too. So Zelensky did what he could, worked his butt off, and he really didn't want to become one of those rich guys because he hated these guys. Um, but at some point, he, even for security reasons, he needed to you know move to a nice house, and he started to get into some sort of a lifestyle. And as I said, you know, you shouldn't really trust anybody who, 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 who is, is abandoning his human nature. I mean, we do like nice things. Um, and it's, it's ridiculous if people slam Zelensky for, you know, some short-lived perks, you know, especially before the war and he had no life as a no life, almost no life quality whatsoever. Uh, slamming this guy, but not slamming the Russians for being, just not not blaming not blaming the Russians for being sick. I mean, it's just, you know, just completely rotten with corruption. They will sell out everybody. They will the Russians will sell out you in one second. They will not let go of a single watch for you. Whether you live or die, they don't care. They care about the watch and they care about the car. Uh, yeah, so then there was this Reuters story recently. It said, Russia said on Wednesday that its partnership with China was not aimed against third countries, but the two powers could combine potential if faced with a threat from the United States. Uh, so they don't like the double containment by the United States. There will be double Counteraction, Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said when asked about a possible deployment of U.S. missiles in Japan. And it's not just the, the weapons uh, sales, it's not just about Ukraine and Japan, it's many other places too. And it's also these new tariffs on Chinese cars and tariffs on other Chinese goods. So protecting ourselves from uh, this predatory uh, fake capitalism that China has been doing for a long time. I mean, not that that we in the West don't really know about what fake capitalism is. See the British Empire and the East India Company. That was just completely <laughs> crazy. Um, but yeah, so um, there's so many fronts where these, uh, where where you know Russia, where the West has to take us, where the West has to take a stand against Russia and China. And of course, at some point, they will claim, okay, we have no other choice. We have to combine forces, even though they've been the same empire virtually secretly for, for a long time. And I've, I've talked about this, or I've read, uh, written about this in my books. You can find them on Amazon. Link is in the description below. I mean, really the same empire. Russia, Russia basically took it over. Um, Ru Russia, uh, Russia, essentially, Russia essentially took over China using Mao and his people. All these Chinese Chinese revolutionaries, they, they were trained and surveilled by the Russians. Everything was under control. Anybody who was not 100% loyal was ejected and replaced. Like you would expect it to, to go. Right? This is, of course, everybody expected that Poland, once taken over, would become a tool of Moscow. Same with other countries. But when, when it comes to Asia, 
in, in China and in North Korea, everybody seemed to believe that they, they were cooking their own soup over there. They were doing their own socialist thing over there. They were not. And we understand that better and better. And not even the great defectors really understood the whole story. They didn't really understand how crazy it was. I mean, we can we can even put the pieces together much better nowadays. Um, so yeah, so um, at some point it will become more difficult for influencers uh, to more difficult to to be pro Russian because that means you also have to be pro China, and 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 it becomes too dangerous for most people. To actually uh, try these uh, try these things and and just to sell out your fellow man because Russia is a problem you know Russia is is not a solution. So yeah, then we got we got that story. This is from the U.S. Gov- U.S. Um, U.S. government. It says today the United States is designating three entities and two individuals for the connection to Russia's destabilizing destabilizing actions abroad, according to new information, much of which originates from employees of Russian state-funded RT, formerly Russia Today. We now know that RT moved beyond being simply a media outlet and has been an entity with cyber capabilities. It is also engaged in information operations, covert influence, and military procurement military procurement these operations are targeting countries around the world including in europe africa and north and south america um so the they say we are taking action against them for their covert influence activities so it's not freedom of speech it's not just the standard stuff covert influence activities are not journalism the united states will always stand for freedom of expression including for those with whom we disagree uh Consistent with General License 25F, these targets may continue to engage in journalism. Media operations not prohibited uh, by U.S. sanctions. Blah blah blah. Um, so yeah, you can you can find the rest uh, the rest online. There's more detail, of course, um, and and there's so much more material that's been collected before they made these uh, statements and everybody knew that everybody who's who's sort of an expert at least could understand what Russia today was what it is and and what it's doing so it's it's comical it's comical that it took so long for the backlash I mean, it, it took the, the aggression the war against Ukraine for these channels to be banned and for some real action to take place and and even with others, you know, the, all these influencers that now get caught. I mean, even with the tenant thing. I mean, these these guys attached to tenant, they got away, sort of, for now. But some people actually didn't get away. As this story here, um, federal trial, uh, federal trial detailing the inner workings of a Russian influence operation in the United States. Uh, this was, I think, last Thursday. Jurors convicting four members of black power groups of conspiring to act as agents of the Russian government. The defendants were acquitted of failing to register as Russian agents, a more serious charge. So they, they still get they can still get a couple of years in prison. And they dodged a bigger bullet there. So if they had been convicted of failing to register as a Russian agent. More prison. Okay, so this is not just calling somebody out in public and saying, you took money from Tenet and then money came from Russia or whatever. This is prison. This is prison. Uh, Prosecutors had argued during the week-long trial in Tampa that the defendants had engaged in a seven-year conspiracy to sow division in American politics. Uh... Blah, blah, blah. So this was uh, involving Omali Yeshitela, chairman of the Uhuru movement. So he plays the victim, of course. Uh, The Uhuru movement is the activist arm of the African People's Socialist Party, organization promoting black power. They they haven't learned this. They haven't learned a thing. They're still going with this fist in the air. We want to run around with AK rifles and, and be Maoists or whatever and freedom, call it freedom or whatever. Same stupid stuff as 
the Black Panthers did so many decades ago. And this is common in these radical circles or even other ideological circles. There is no progress. Think about all these fields of science. There's constant progress. If there wasn't, they would immediately understand that they're doing something really wrong. There's constant progress, and every now and then there's a big breakthrough. This is how science nowadays is. But when it comes to political science, it's really a joke. And even when people look at history, it's so bad. It's so backwards. There's never real progress, and there's never a breakthrough. Look at the stuff that the libertarians are saying nowadays. It's the same stuff we've heard in the 1960s. And it's it's never become a full science or an advanced science on, on attaining and maintaining liberty. It's still lacking all the intelligence stuff and the military stuff and the, the, the real history of the empires and the real intelligence history. They're lacking all these things. And, and they've been the libertarians have been bought mostly by um, by these super rich people. And, and this is a strong Russian infiltration too of the libertarian movement, obviously. Um, and so, yeah, and it's the same with all these groups. I mean, others are still peddling Karl Marx. I mean, Karl Marx was an idiot such a long time ago. Um, Karl, Karl Marx couldn't deal, handle money and he couldn't deal with people. And he's still regarded as this genius to tell you how to live with other people and how to handle money and resources and production. Really? Really? So his big contribution was to say that early industrial capitalism sucked for people. Everybody knew that. That's not a genius thing to say. And coming up with this gimmick of not having, you know, uh, demand and, and, and supply dictate or, or indicate prices for goods and labor and services, but instead saying, uh, we're going to have some government officials who just make the prices according to the common good or whatever. That wasn't, that, that, that was no real solution either. I mean, this is basically what, what the aristocracy had done for thousands of years of recorded imperial history. You know, it's these special class of people who make these decisions and they say, of course, it's in the best interest of everybody if I have a lot and these regular people, they don't have anything and, and we need that for protection. Um, and we're blessed by the God, by God and everybody else, you know, needs to follow our lead and that's the only way to go. Um, people are still doing that. So at trial, prosecutors laid out how Mr. Yeshitela visited Moscow and established a long-term relationship with a Russian man who worked with the FSB, a Russian intelligence agency. From 2015 to 2022, prosecutors said Russians directed and in some cases paid the Americans to push Russian to push Russian propaganda. Okay, so uh, so you're this black guy. You go to Russia. According to this, uh, according to prosecutors, is you go to Russia and you take money from Russian intelligence, right, to further the black cause in America, right? So, so get freedom or reparations or whatever. So, big problem is um, besides the the illegality of of, of these actions, uh, the big problem is the Russians. The Russians are also working with all these other groups in America. Racist groups even, Nazi groups even, uh, people who hate minorities and who are working for the opposite goals, you know, the cranks, the crazies, right? Um, and even just the polarization of, of okay, let's, let's not work together, let's not find common ground, let's not be productive with each other and, and treat each other well and isolate the bad actors no, no matter what they look like and just just deal with them properly and 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 work with each other and f solve these problems and get more money and freedom for everybody but instead just hate 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 all the time so what exactly i mean how is this what was his name uh omali omali yeshitela how is this moron going to sell this to his own crowd well I've, i mean he's trying to portray himself as 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 the hero and the martyr yeah i'm fighting for my people and and that's why they come after me yada 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 it's always the same song and dance but really um you take russian money and you are radical 
like this anti-white, anti, you know, and you, you're an anti, anti-white radical. You make things worse for your own group. You make things worse for black people. And you also do not call out. You, you do not call out the Russians who give you money for supporting uh, these. You do not call out the Russians for supporting the white, the white racists in America. Who make life worse for black people? How is this guy selling this to his stupid followers, to his stupid audience? Honestly. Right? How, how in the world can you justify that and selling that stuff to his audience? You know, I'm wondering, does, does, Mr. O, does Mr. Omali Yeshitella, does he like fancy watches? Does he like fancy status and women and stuff like that? Does, does he like that? Or is he so fanatical that he will align himself with the devil, the literal devils over there in Russia? Would he align himself with the devil to, 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 to get closer to his goals, even though he's getting further away from his goals? What are his true goals? What side is he playing for? And imagine some other guy like Omali Yeshitela, some other douche, some other guy, um, some other guy getting caught with something like that, very same thing, visiting Moscow, taking money from the FSB, no matter if it's a lefty or righty or whatever, I don't care. He gets caught by the FBI and the CIA and the NSA. And then they go to him and say, okay, um, you know, we got all the info. We know exactly what you did. Uh, we want you to work for us. And usually these intelligence agencies, they're really good at recruiting people. So sometimes they take an aggressive approach right away and say, okay, we caught you. Here's your options. Sometimes they do that. Oftentimes they phrase it in a nicer way. They try to be or appear somewhat diplomatic and and um and tell that they like some of your goals and they just want this all to be more controlled and if you cooperate this will benefit his the community of that guy and blah 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 but ultimately this person will get recruited he will sell out his followers and he will sell out his fellow activists to just to be stay out of prison he will sell them out, become an asset of the federal government. And there's some people who, who will not sell out, but they're so fanatical and stupid, they will go to prison and think they're the great martyr, but they never really did something that, they never really did anything that really benefited their community. So stupid, so wrong, and every group is doing the same thing, same thing. Uh, yeah, so, uh, what other notes do I have here? Um, the, the anti-conspiracy chatbot, so this is, uh, this is called Debunk Bot, an AI chatbot designed by researchers to very effectively persuade users to stop believing unfounded conspiracy theories, blah, blah, blah. Study published in the journal Science. Um, Debunk Bot uses kind of the same technology as chat gpt uh they actually used that and it was it was quite successful now um obviously using artificial intelligence and you can also use some more advanced databases on people and psychometrics which is measuring people's personality the more you click online and do stuff online and people get that data off of you they can analyze your personality and they can predict um, how you're going to react to a specific thing. They can tailor messages so you would more likely accept these messages down to the wording, the the person that's saying the stuff to you and, and the way it's being told to you or when, the timing, when, when they tell you these things. So there's some very powerful and very dangerous tools out there. Um, and uh, so uh, obviously you can you can produce a bot like this, a chat bot, and use it for good. And if you do it the right way, for example, you can uh, push back against Russian propaganda, or you can push against other dangerous propaganda. And I think that's already being used by by various uh, agencies. And so it's it's useless trying to win this regular baseline activism game. 
oh, I'm shilling for the Russians. Maybe that's gonna, maybe mom shilling for the right wingers. Maybe I'm shilling for. The... Not gonna work. You gotta get outside of this game. You cannot win that game. You gotta see the bigger picture and play the real game, the actual game. Because you can win against these artificial intelligences and you cannot win against uh, so many other people who are just as easily manipulated as you, possibly. You cannot win. Uh, and of course, you can use it for evil too. You can uh, uh, fake debunk real stuff. Or you can keep the real stuff outside of the debate altogether. Because there is the intelligence world. I mean, empires depend on actionable intelligence. And that's been for 10,000 10, years. And we learn a lot more about, you know, the ancient intelligence world and, and medieval intelligence. It's a very new field of science, actually. Um, and also nobody wants to do it or no, almost nobody can do it. But it's sort of plausible, even if you don't get in, haven't been really into this. It's really plausible. A, a really big empire, a really serious empire needs serious intelligence capabilities. Otherwise, you lose. You know, it's very clear, been very clear for a long time to these empires. You want to know the secrets of the pop your own population, you want to know the secrets of these other countries, and you want to protect your own secrets. You want to always use your limited resources at the best possible time, at the most opportune um, spot. So you need intelligence. And um, so there's still a lot of stuff that we don't, we haven't really looked at in the past, concerning the past. And so... Intel the intelligence world is so powerful and it, it's it's so important and many people don't know about it so they don't really understand its size and when they're confronted with bad conspiracy material the conspiracy junk and they think there's there's this conspiracy junk and there's kind of the mainline the, the mainline opinion so they choose the mainline opinion and when they're confronted with it actual intelligence topics they get confused. They think it's conspiracy stuff, but it's not. There's a clear distinction between those things. Um, so this is something. This is something you need to remember. Now, uh, I talked a lot about uh, corruption, and uh, it's it's a very interesting mental game you can play. You know, you just look at some person or the other. You think about what's what really matters to that person. What what really matters to Donald Trump? What makes him happy, or or uh, you know what 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 really gives him the thrills? What about Kamala Harris? Uh, what about Barack Obama? You know what floats his boat? What 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 does he really care about? And and what would he not tolerate? I mean, what kind of lifestyle would he absolutely not tolerate? At what point would they sell you out? This is something, this is a game you have to play. And even when it comes to people in your own life, people close to you or people you work for or people you work with, local politicians, always ask yourself, what is really important to this person and um, and what, what's necessary, what's necessary to um, keep that person maybe um, to, 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 to make sure that this person acts in the interest of of other people you know because he may be he may be a good person now or he may be, make good choices now but if if there's not enough support for a good person and if there's not enough control if this person misbehaves or the willingness to control um then that person will inevitably make bad decisions later on so it's not just about that person it's also about the environment it's about your input do you reward the right people or do you you punish people when it's suitable, or do you get it mixed up? And usually, the average people out there, they get it mixed up. They support and reward the wrong people for the wrong behavior, and then they punish uh, decent people for, for, their, um, for their behavior. All right. We'll be back soon with the uh, candor intelligence briefing. We'll also be back with... Um, uh, uh, friends and enemies with Jeff Nyquist. Now he's also been very busy with things in his life and 
restructuring things so he can move on to the next chapter and he's he of course he needs um or wants international partners for for that next chapter um sounds really exciting um takes a lot of work obviously uh we'll be back uh, also be back with uh, some other videos covering different topics and you can also find my books on amazon as uh ebooks uh, and it's hard copy. So check out the links in the description below. Visit Candor Intel. Subscribe to this channel and like those uh, videos and comment on it. And of course, spread them online because, uh, you know, you, YouTube really doesn't love us. And Rumble probably doesn't love us very much either. And Twitter maybe not doesn't love us that much either. But it's up to you out there. So it's, it's also your responsibility uh, to see us grow. All right. Uh, see you next time. And uh, take care, everyone.